wow, wick, 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 wow, wow, Wednesday. So stupid. So stupid. Ladies and gentlemen, you deserve better from me, okay? I will be better for you. I don't even deserve to do another song. Ah, hooked on a feeling. I'll be better, ladies and gentlemen. I'm always trying to get better for you. The fact that if you're willing to give me your time that you could be spending listening to some other bullshit podcast, hey, there's a lot of them. There's a lot of them. But you know what? This is the 90th episode, and we just... I plan on not being a hit till I have a thousand episodes. So fuck it, you know? Some people say you got to get your 10,000 hours. I don't have that kind of time. I don't have that kind of time, you know? Bank's going to run out. Can't be waiting until I hit 10,000 podcasts to be a professional at this. So I will be better for you guys, okay? Um, welcome to Wednesday. Dude, listen, though. What, growing up, if you put on Wild Wild West, mm, I'd watch the whole thing. There was one of those movies where... When I was a kid, you put that shit on at a party. You know when you're like going to someone's birthday party, y'all are just being little fucks, jumping around on the trampoline, and all of a sudden you hear, it's like, oh shit, this party is lit, fam. Kids would be like, what'd you just say? Are you from the future using terms like lit, fam? No one said lit, fam, when you were a little kid. Not in my day. That shit was tight back in my day. God, I sound old. That's what happens. It happens to all of us. And it's a beautiful thing. That's what I realize as I get older. Take a drink if you're playing the game. Uh, Evan says, as I get older. Is there's just different stages. And you can't be afraid of them. Okay? You know? That's what makes the stages of life beautiful. It's the fact that they don't last forever. And they get better. I have not yet had uh, an age bracket where I'm like, ugh, I just want to be stuck there. Because your brain plays tricks on you. Your brain will make you think that that time in your life was actually better than it really was. Like it kind of, you know, obviously sometimes it doesn't just forget the bad stuff. But sometimes it glamorizes the past and nostalgic, puts a little nostalgic film over it for you. Makes it seem all, you know, wonder years-ish. But that shit is, it's an illusion. You know, and as long as you keep trying to progress, you're going to gracefully go into the next chapter of life. Okay. Um, and that's what you got to do. You got to try to do it gracefully. You got to know where you're at and, and you have to keep adapting and evolving in that stage of life. Because you know what? Your boy's hitting. I've been in my 30s now, but you just got to keep going. You, you can't be like, oh, I want to be in my 20s. I want to fucking play with tech decks forever. Nah, man. You just got to keep it moving, pimping. Got to keep it moving. You know which stage I'm super excited about? The Silver Fox days. When I'm like 60-something, just a, a cool head of white hair, just in a fucking dapper-ass suit. I already wear, uh, what are they called? Newspaper boy hats. Paper boy hats. Fucking love them. I fucking love them. I've been wearing those since it was a fashion risk, okay? When it wasn't fucking cool. I remember when people were making fun of me for wearing V-necks. I wore V-necks before it was a thing. I'm telling you right now. People would call me grandpa shirt. And I'd be like, you fucks, just wait. You just wait. I'm a fucking trendsetter. I invented the V-neck, okay? I invented the boneless wing versus bone-in battle, all right? I'm more synonymous with bone-in wings than dementia and Joe Biden, Bars, political bars. Sorry, we snuck that one in there, ladies and gentlemen. Wasn't going to talk about it. Um, but yeah, feeling good, ladies and gentlemen. We're doing good on a Wednesday. Getting wild on a Wednesday. I think today's Wednesday. Um, yeah, it is. Also, happy Veterans Day. Shout out to all the veterans. Uh, obviously, and that's something that uh, gets overlooked, I think, with... Uh, Man, something that's crazy that I had no idea about uh, is the amount of heroin that was used in Vietnam by our soldiers. And then once I realized that, I was like, that's why so many homeless people are from Vietnam. Like, that's why you see so many homeless vets from Vietnam. And obviously, I might be I painting with broad strokes. 
but there's 100% a connection in that. Um, that was something I just didn't know. And before I get too off track, uh, I think it gets out of our mind somewhere that, uh, these veterans, the sacrifice that they did, the courage that it takes, the, it, what I'm saying is thank you as, as cliche as that sounds it. Thank you for everything you've done. Uh, every single one of them. I have veterans, my family, and, uh, it's amazing. And I, and I think that's one thing that I don't, you know, there's a bunch of hippies that there's just always a peace, love, no, don't make war, whatever, grow out your armpits, whatever they fucking say. Everyone can kind of agree that without the sacrifice made by so many veterans, uh, we wouldn't have this. We wouldn't even have the ability to protest. We wouldn't have, you know, this country where the idea behind it, liberty, freedom, and the right for the pursuit of happiness. I know I didn't say that correctly, but it's somewhere in there, you know, but uh, it's amazing. It's amazing that people can be so selfless. It kind of, you reflect and you're like, wow, there's people who are actually just trying to do the good thing. It's easy to get pessimistic on the world when you, uh, when you look on social media too much, you're on the internet and you get kind of a convoluted, uh, a really condensed version of the worst toxicity. It's easy to forget that there's so many people that are just trying to do the right thing. And I think that's a huge part of the country. And that's why, you know, I don't, I don't care what your political beliefs are, uh, as a person. Um, and, and with the outcome of the election, uh, which we kind of really don't know, but it is nice to see so many people happy. Uh, on social media, when people are celebrating, I don't really give a shit what you're celebrating. You, you let it let you be happy for a little bit. You know, you don't really. Uh, people have taken a lot of L's lately, and and I'm all for people just having fun, um, and feeling good. And, and I hope I hope in a lot of ways that things do turn out better. Okay, we, it's not going to be easy, but I, I hope it turns out good. Um, but yeah, happy Veterans Day, ladies and gentlemen. But um, the reason I learned about the Vietnam thing recently is reading this book. Uh, I've, I talked about it in the last podcast, I believe, Atomic Habits. Phenomenal book. Really life-changing. Life-changing stuff. I never say that about books. But one of the things I was talking about was creating your environment. And this is a great tip. This is why I always hate those quotes where people talk about, oh, every genius and great artist, they were messy. No, they fucking weren't. Those are just the 1% of the 1%. The real people in a bigger uh, pool always care so much about their environment. There's a great book, another book, the the art of no, the war of art, not the art of war, the war of art, where it says you need to put your environment that where you work, uh, whether it's your desk, a table, whatever it is, in order so that the muse does not dirty her dress when she enters the room. And the muse is obviously a metaphor for this, uh, the creativity. Like basically you need to have your environment ready uh, for you to create stuff. And it's basically just saying, have a clean room, have things in order so that you cut out as many resistance points and things that are going to stop you from actually getting started, you know? Um, but one of the things I was talking about with Vietnam was... Uh, this book was Atomic Habits is talking about how your environment matters so much to what your habits are, you know, because we are creatures of habit and what we kind of do on a daily basis, daily basis is kind of just automatic. We go on autopilot. That's the beautiful thing about our brain. It's just how amazing it is with learning automation and everything like that. That's uh, your reflexes. That's why if you box or do jujitsu, you got to get things into muscle memory. So you're just reacting and that's what your brain does, but not to get too off topic bars, rabbit hole bars, um, talking about how your environment happen matters so much for triggers that elicit a response in you, whether they're good habits or bad habits. And the point that he was using the example was Vietnam. When we had a bunch of soldiers over there, apparently it was an astronomical number. Shout out to the dictionary for that word. Um, astronomical number, the amount of soldiers that were using heroin. It was like nine out of 27. It was like or one out of every nine. It was a weird statistic, but it was quite a bit. was hooked on heroin. And uh, I think it was 
It was a bigger number than that. It was something like 80% of the soldiers in Vietnam used heroin while they were there because it was just everywhere. And once they got back, only one out of those nine actually kept using heroin. Overnight, we had all these soldiers stop using heroin. And they were saying, the, the author of this book was saying, this is directly linked to how important our environment is. And uh, I thought that was fascinating, that being out of the situation of where you used it and you're back in your regular life with your family and everything like that, you're able to not need that trigger to satisfy that. Um, so it was fascinating. But that was just a crazy fact that I learned from it about, uh, about Vietnam and heroin. I had no idea. And it makes so much sense when you look at homeless. Yeah, that's, a, that's just a, a little tidbit for you. Um, in other strange news, uh, this could be good or bad. This could be good or bad. Um, Pfizer, the, uh, uh, I believe they're a pharmaceutical company. I thought they were like a toilet company, uh, Pfizer, because the fucking country's going down the drain. Dumb bars. Created a vaccine that is having a 90% success rate for COVID-19. Um, what's happening in that 10% is what I'm worried about. Um, I go back and forth if I would get a vaccine. If you tell me it's mandatory, ain't going to get it. Sorry. Ain't going to get it. You ain't going to get me. Um, but even like with the flu, there was a few times I've gone back and forth on being like, well, should I get the flu shot this year? Cause you know, um, uh, it's the fucking media is calling it flumageddon or some shit, covageddon. Basically, <clears throat> the sniffles ageddon. If uh, COVID-19, if you get COVID-19 and the flu at the same time, I've been seeing that all over with flu season. And objectively, that makes sense because I'm just like, okay, you know, it's going to be winter. Could get the sniffles, could get a cold, going to be run down. Your boy gets run down in the winter when the weather, when the weather starts changing, get a little sniffle. Get a little sniffle. Um, and I debated that on the flu. But then I'm like, man, if you don't use it, you lose it. And, and I keep wanting to test my immune system. Sometimes you just got to keep it ready, you know, and I get that we're in a pandemic. But things are always going to come up, you know. They, I just saw something yesterday that COVID-19, uh, there's another strain of it now that mutated from a mink farm in like Poland or some shit. And I'm just like, God damn. And what's crazy is uh, it jumped to humans from these minks and the, I don't know if it was Poland, to be honest with you, but we're going to go with it. And uh, the Polish government was like, they're, they were going to do a mandatory slaughter of all that entire mink farm to just snuff it out from existence. And uh, the people protested. And I'm like, this is either going to be a good or a bad thing because they protested uh, the animal cruelty of these minks getting killed. And that's like, a, that's so in line with the times of people like risk versus reward of, and the government didn't do it. They're like, all right, we'll fucking find something else to do with these minks. Uh, I'm just like, dude, slaughter all the minks and give everybody who's upset a mink jacket, like a mink fur coat. You can't be upset. Listen, I've never actually felt a mink coat, but I hear they're phenomenal. You probably can't be upset if you're wearing a mink coat, you know? Like, you could be angry for a second. You're like, I can't believe they slaughtered. Oh. Oh, my. And you're like, I hear there's another mink farm a couple miles down the road. Let's go take care of that shit. Get some slippers, you know? Win-win situation for everybody. But I look at it and I'm just like, man, if people, uh, people protesting that to like not want all the minks killed, but it's like that shit happens with birds all the time, like bird flu and everything. I had a lady growing up. A lot of people don't know this. Your boy, very in the pigeons. Okay. Uh, my dad grew up with pigeons and, uh, when he came to California, uh, my grandpa was also in the pigeons. So I've literally had pigeons, pet pigeons, from the day I was born all the way up 
till 18 years old uh, until I went to college. I had pigeons every day of my life. Every day of my goddamn life, a pigeon was involved. I saw a pigeon almost every day of my life from zero to 18. Think about that. I know a lot about pigeons. And uh, I'd fly them and shit. You know, you got your coops, you're mating different pigeons and everything. I'd breed them and, you know, had some dope pigeons. And uh, this lady moved in uh, on the other side of our fence. And apparently she had like expensive exotic parrots and shit. And because of like bird flu going around, she asked us if we could move our pigeon cage, which was built into the ground. Had about 60 birds in there, bird bars. She asked us if we would move it across the property. Sure, lady. Let me just uproot an entire cage because you got a couple fucking parakeets that you're worried about getting the sniffles. I didn't do it, but it put it on the radar for me, bird flu. It was funny one time, I think I've told this on the podcast, uh, my grandpa would always, when, you know, my flock would get a little low, he would stock your boy up. He wouldn't, you know, I'd go visit grandpa. He would give me a box of pigeons. And uh, I remember one time he gave me uh, a really nice homing pigeon, which is a pigeon like that they use in the messenger pigeons, where it can, it knows where it's flying. <clears throat> it knows where its home is. And it can fly there. And uh, Grandpa lived like 60 to 70, probably like 60 to 70 miles away. And he told me when he gave me the special homing pigeon, he says, make sure you keep it in the coop for like three or four weeks. This takes longer to set because that's like the crazy thing about pigeons is you have to keep them usually if they're a regular pigeon at least a week in the coop once you get them because they need to realize they need to kind of reset in their head all right this is my fucking home i gotta you know they're giving me food and water there's a bunch of new hot bitches in here they know that's a coop but these homing pigeons they don't give a fuck you can torture them you can do whatever they need a solid four or five weeks to just have their brain scrambled thinking you're home now and of course i was a little kid i'm like okay grandpa and grandpa gives me the pigeons I put them in the coop. And here's the thing. I loved flying the pigeons, okay? You're going to hate me for it. I loved flying them. And I would get out in that backyard. Even a little kid, I'd have bamboo sticks to keep them flying. Because that's the thing. You got to keep them up in the air. You don't want some fat out of shape pigeons. Someone who's like a pigeon breeder, collector comes by. And you want to show off your uh, your flock, your kit, if you will. You don't want to show your lazy birds. You want them up there. Whew. As my dad would say, get them in the pins where they get so high up there and you're just shoo, shoo, shoo. so I'd fly them. I love flying them. And then you put a little bird food in there and they would fly back down. But grandpa gave me like probably six or seven birds. I put them all in there. Only one homing pigeon. About a week goes by. Your boy salivating. I get to like the 10 day mark and I'm just looking at them and I just have drool. And I'm just like, I want to fly these fucking birds. And uh, I keep hearing my my grandpa in my head being like, ah, you're a little whippersnapper. Don't let the bird out. Okay, grandpa. Mute. Put grandpa. Mute. Uh, little Jiminy Cricket grandpa. Mute. Evan, we're flying these fucking birds. That's what the little devil on my other side of my shoulder said. And uh, I opened the cage. And uh, that's the other thing is my trick was, when I wanted the pigeons to come back in in the, in the evening when it would start getting dark or if I only wanted them up there for like an hour, I'd sprinkle food and they would hear their metal tin and they would fly in because I kept them hungry. I always kept them hungry. You got to keep them hungry. Um, and I let the pigeons out and they take off. They start flying. The homing pigeon flies out the coop. Beelines it for fucking Pasadena. Oh, no. All the other pigeons just going in a circle. Not that homing pigeon. I just watch it disappear over the hill into the horizon. God damn it. I just lost a pigeon. And here's the thing. At the time, geographical skills wasn't a Boy Scout. Didn't have a compass. Didn't know it was flying to Pasadena. I just thought, he gone. He gone. Load no, that pigeon gone. Maybe uh, four or five days go by. Get a phone call. Ring, ring. Parents pick up. Oh, hey, Grandpa. Blah, 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 blah. Hey, Evan, Grandpa wants to talk to you. Oh, cool. 
What up, Grandpa? Start talking to him. Hey, Evan Paul Blanche checking in. How are the new pigeons doing? Ah, doing great. Doing great. Oh, that's good. Good, good, good. Uh, how's that homing pigeon doing? <sighs> that homing pigeon, he's doing great. He's doing really good. I looked on him this morning, you know, still there. He goes, yeah, 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 he's doing good. You haven't let him out of the cage? Nah, pff, why would I? He told me not to, you know. <laughs> Responsible. And uh, he goes, yeah, 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 yeah. What's crazy is I went out to the coop this morning and there is a twin. The exact pigeon that I gave you has a twin and it landed on my coop this morning. Crazy, huh? And I go, what? That's nuts. And he goes, what's crazy is I checked the band. It's the same number of the pigeon I gave you. And I literally just go, Grandpa, I'm so sorry. I blah, 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 blah. And then he just laughed it off. But uh, he played me. He knew what he was doing and he played me. And you know what? Shout out to him. Uh, like my dad always says, you can do whatever you want in this world. But if you get caught, you have to pay the time. Do the crime, pay the time. That was another thing I love about pigeons. I think it's just the collector. Because your boy, I love collecting things. Um, and I'm not very big right now. Not very big on it in the sense of like actually having physical things. But like... I loved collecting pigeons where I had different looking pigeons, different kinds. I had these pigeons called king pigeons where they were bigger than chickens. Like they were giant, like they were huge pigeons and uh, they were so dope. They barely flew. They were so fucking fat. They were like Jabba the Hutt pigeons, but they were dope and your boy collected them. And one thing I loved to do was go to the feed and hay store where I'd get the pigeon food and I would get my own special bands. I had these little green bands. I used to love putting it on the foot because that was like how you would identify them was a lot of breeders. They would have their own little color bands. They would have like when it was born. Some people had like pimped out metal bands they would put on their pigeon's feet. That shit was tight, son, tight. I used to love catching other people's pigeons. That was like a crazy thing. Go, welcome to the pigeons podcast, huh? I would love uh, crashing other people's flocks. That was like, I don't know if this was frowned upon, but your boy did it. I had two I had two different kits. This is when I got a little older and I started getting darker, okay? But I had two different kits. I would have the pigeons I really cared about, and then I had a crashing kit. And the crashing kit was when I would see someone, this is fucked up now that I think about it. When I would see someone else flying their pigeons in the neighborhood, your boy would send up his crashing kit. And what the crashing kit is, is when two different flocks of pigeons are up there flying, uh... Sometimes they get confused and they crash into each other, meaning they just like kind of fly and morph together. And then some of the pigeons get confused. You lose a little bit, a couple of your pigeons, but you gain a couple of new pigeons. You know, it's kind of like a trade, but I'm just using my crashing kit. I don't give a shit about these birds. I caught them. There's feral pigeons that I turned into pets and uh, you would crash and get someone else's pigeon. You just, you know, I don't think it was illegal probably frowned upon okay it wasn't the coolest thing i ever did would i do it now if there were cool pigeons yeah i would um but when you would crash you would get someone else's pigeons and they would be like you would look at their bands and everything and be like oh shit you could see how old a pigeon was you get some rollers those were pigeons that would do tricks and they would fucking roll out of the sky google it rollers dope fucking shit bet you didn't even know this world existed well it did but that's actually something that uh, I really want to get back into. When I move to Texas, uh, I think eventually I'll get a pigeon coop again. Start flying pigeons. Fucking love it. I don't know why. It's just one of those things that you that's like ingrained in me. It's mainly like an East Coast thing. Okay, it's like definitely more prominent there. Um, flying pigeons and. Uh, yeah, I think I think that was, you know, that's how like how my dad got into it was uh, in Brooklyn when he was a little kid. He saw a cat or a dog corner a pigeon and he ended up rescuing the pigeon. And then he just had one fucking pigeon and he lived in an apartment complex. So he had one little box for a pigeon. And then one of his uh, his sister's uh, boyfriends came over and uh, helped him build a cage and gave him a bunch of birds. And that's the seed that was planted. That now has me talking about pigeons on the podcast. Bars. Pigeon bars. Just did like 15 minutes on pigeons, ladies and gentlemen. 
Shit's wild. Shit's wild. Um, speaking of that, segue. There was a hiker that found a message dropped by a carrier pigeon from 1910. Just recently found this. It probably was a vote for Trump. Bars. Lost ballot. Vote by messenger pigeon. Bars. Um, I just thought that was crazy. Um, dude, I got to play you guys this. Listen, <clears throat> your boy, I keep saying this podcast is under construction where we're going to start being able to pull up videos and do a bunch of shit. But I have to pull up this video of Kenneth Copeland um, laughing about Joe Biden. It's the weirdest shit ever. This is... Well, this is awkward. This is the weirdest shit ever. This is why, like, preachers and everything... Just listen to this. The media said what? <laughs> the media said Joe Biden's president. Ha 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 <laughs> what the actual fuck is going on in the world that is if you don't know that is kenneth copeland the richest preacher in the entire goddamn world multi 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 millionaire makes Joel Osteen look at it like a goddamn curbside evangelist I don't know if that's a thing but this is the richest preacher in the world and he's laughing the media says Joe Biden won the election and he's laughing maniacally and what's worse than that everybody in his church starts weirdly doing this forced laughter it is just such a creepy video. Kenneth Copeland, he's the same guy that uh, did the video telling COVID-19 to be gone. And he was like, you leave here, COVID-19. You leave here. He always speaks in tongues and shit. Listen to this. We'll exercise judgment right now. Because we in have... In the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Standing in the office of the prophet of God, I execute judgment on you, COVID-19. Oh, I execute judgment on you, oh. Satan, you destroyer, you killer, you get out, you break your power, you get off this nation. I demand Amen. judgment on you. I demand, oh. I demand, I demand. A vaccination to come immediately. Yes. Two million views. He put this on his I own page. I call you done. He called him done. I call you Don gone. Don gone. You come down. He called it from down. your In place of authority, destroyer. You come down and you <laughs> crawl on your oh, belly. Gosh. Like God commanded you when he put his foot on your head in the Garden of Eden. Oh, he called it the snake. He called COVID-19. You will devil. destroy through COVID-19. Mm. No more. No more. No more. It wasn't a bad. It no more. It was the devil. Is finished. 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 God, this was seven it months ago. Is over. Seven months later. And the United States of America okay, God only cares is about healed the United States. and well Thank you again. Praise. Wait, he only healed the United States. So the guy asked him, can you do this? And he said, the United States is healed. So what the fuck about the rest of the world? That is the wildest shit ever. Wildest shit. I will put the video up with that. Saith the mighty Hallelujah. Spirit. Glory. Of peace, who is also the Prince of War. 
the Lord Jesus Christ. When oppressive, mean, nasty people attack his people. When mean, oppressive, all right. Um, hopefully, I don't get that taken down. We're gonna fucking around and find out. Um, his people, George. He called Jesus Christ the Prince of War. The Prince That's of what's peace dope when you're a preacher peace. and you like have the authority to kind of just like make up shit because you talk to God. That's when it gets dope. That's when you can. Uh, that's when you know you 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 fucking got it. Let's see how much Kenneth Copeland is worth. Kenneth Copeland net worth. Oh, cool. He only has 300 million. He's got these creepy little beady eyes that I'm pretty sure he is the devil. And that's what you would do, right? You would just come back and pretend to be for God and be the devil. You know what else I just realized from that video? He didn't have a mask on and he definitely had people indoors and it's during the pandemic. Like, he's not following any. He only plays by God's rules. That's the thing is when you get to Kenneth Copeland's level, you don't play by the policy of America. You play by God's rules and on the God's rules. And you laugh maniacally at Joe Biden possibly winning the election. I say that with an asterisk. We're going to have the recount. But how wild is that? He literally, there's so many weird videos of him. I just don't get it. Listen, I, I get, listen, I, I'm not smart enough to know if there is a God or not. You know, there has to be something. There's something, but it ain't this weird manipulated shit that Kenneth Copeland is doing. Okay. Because obviously you can do that once. You can pull that off once. I might even give you two where you smite down COVID-19 and say United States is free of it. I'm going to go. All right, let's see. And then if it doesn't, that's the, that's it. Like, I'll let you do that once, but if you start doing it again and you're like, and it's gone. Eh, is it though? Is it? Because kind of seems like it's not gone. And also, while you're at it, if you're asking God to just get rid of COVID-19, why did you only do it for the United States? Does God only care about the United States? God would probably, or Jesus would probably be like, what about my homies in the Middle East? Oh, we're just not going to fuck with Jerusalem? Okay. Nazareth isn't going to get a little blessing? Okay. No shout out to the hometown. Got it. Got it. Got it. Cool, 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 cool. Only United States. Only United States. Weird times, ladies and gentlemen. Um, at this time next week, Monday, there's going to be some pretty uh, big changes to the podcast. I was hoping to have them up uh, by today, but didn't happen, baby. But I just want to tell you guys, I love you so much. Uh, going through weird times, but it's all going to be good, baby. Uh, just keep working on yourself. Keep working on your life. I don't give a shit. Fucking fall off the wagon for all I care. Just kidding. I love you. Uh, and I know I say it all the time, but thank you so much for listening. It means the world to me. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, whatever you cool cats and kittens do. And I will see you on Monday, ladies and gentlemen. Monday.